Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here, and today you'll be leading your heroes to fight for glory. You'll be building your own cities, which help you recruit characters, use spells and relics, and employ cunning tactics. Legends of Signum is a unique combination of a skirmish miniatures war game and collectible card game for one to four players, plays in 30 to 90 minutes for ages 12 and up. Now it's on Kickstarter right now, so I'm gonna show you how the game works and I'll see you on the other side. This is a Kickstarter preview, so all the art and components you see here are prototypes. You're going to want to check the Kickstarter link in the description of this video to see all the final art and components. Today we're going to be showing off these two starter sets, and each of these comes with different minis, lots of cards and components, so each of these will be played by one player. Now each of the sets comes with their own hero, which has their character card and their miniature, and it tells you how much health they have because the winner will be the one to reduce the other player's hero's health down to zero. But you can also win by being the first to get 51 of these prosperity points. Now here are some of the miniatures that come with the different sets. And here's some actual renderings of what these miniatures look like in detail. Each player has their own battle deck which they'll use to play different types of cards in the game. Now here's the playing area where all of the action takes place in the game. And each player is going to place their hero along the edge near them on that board. Each player is going to start with four cards from their battle deck in their hand. Now the game is played over multiple rounds. Each round, each of the players are going to be taking turns. Now each of their turns goes through five different phases and they'll go through all of these on their turn before it's the next player's turn. Now the first phase is the turn start phase, and this is where you'll simply take a card off the top of your deck and add it to your hand. Now after drawing, you will check to make sure you don't have more than 10 cards because that's the hand limit. The next phase is the construction phase where you could build one of these buildings into your city area. Now to build one of these, you simply pay the prosperity points. Now everyone starts with three of these, and if you decide not to build one of these, you actually gain two prosperity points, so you can sort of build them up and try to plan for longer ones, ones that cost a little bit more to build that are more powerful. For example, these two buildings cost two each. And this one allows you to pay a prosperity to untap this, because over the course of the turn, you're going to be able to tap these cards to do different things, like take a specific action, like uh, your character will gain one uh, ranged attack until the end of your turn. But sometimes you'll actually be tapping these to do other things, like playing cards from your hand, or even bringing terrains out on the board. We'll show you more about this later. And even though I'm showing you both of these in that first turn, you can only build one building each turn. The third phase is playing terrain. Now there's different terrain types you can place out there, and the cost of them is going to be tapping a certain amount of buildings, like this is two, three, four, things like that. And these will do different things depending on what they are. You'll be placing this terrain out on the board. For example, if you're next to a forest, and if someone's trying to shoot against you, you'll have an expert defense of one. Or if you put the rocks out there, it'll block line of sight. So let's say we wanted to place this one, it's two. And let's just say it was not our first turn, we actually had both of these out. You could actually tap both of these to place that terrain. This is just to show you that these won't be able to be used again this round or this turn, because at the beginning of your next turn, in addition to gaining a card from your battle deck, you'll be able to untap these and be able to use them again. For example, maybe you'd place rocks here because this is your hero and you have a feeling they're going to come attack you next turn, so you've placed the rocks here so that they don't have line of sight to be able to hit you with any sort of ranged attack. The next phase is the activation phase, and this is when you're going to be playing different cards from your hand. And there's different types of cards. For example, these are character cards. These are where you can bring other miniatures on the board. It's going to have some stats of dice they roll, how far they can move, their health, and things like that, their abilities. Uh, you might have cards that are spells. Or maybe you have some tactic cards. And other times you might be playing relic cards, which require your hero to have certain relics in order to use the card. Now earlier we had talked about these two buildings that we had built. Now remember, you can only build one building per turn. But let's say these two were out there, and we hadn't tapped them to create terrain like we had already showed you. And they were still usable. Again, you could tap them to use their abilities, but you can also tap them to play cards from your hand. For example, this one says any one building, and it needs this barracks here. So we, I could literally use this for this one, and use this logo for this one. It's tapped, and this allows me to play this card, which allows me to summon a creature onto the board. So now not only do you have your hero, you actually have this card next to it. This is this certain character. It has an ability where it has you know, two 
uh, ranged attack, Hall of Arrows. So if it's in contact with a forest, which is one of the terrains you can bring up, uh, you can place it in contact with another forest instead of moving. So sort of like you know, jumping around a little bit. Now when you summon that character, it's going to come on the edge of your board just like your hero started the game in. The next is the miniature actions phase, and this is where you're going to be essentially activating your different characters or creatures on the board, and you'll be doing different things like attacking, moving, using abilities. Now, if your specific character or hero in this case has the ability to use a ranged attack, you can do so, and you'll use this little measuring stick, which the XL shows you how far you can. Now, you need to have line of sight, meaning going directly from here to the one that you're going to try to hit and things like that, and you will essentially you know, do, do a ranged attack. Uh, but different things can stop line of sight, like different characters, the rocks, as we talked about earlier, would block sight, things like that. Uh, but that's one of the things you could do as a range attack, assuming your character could do so. Now, when you do that range attack, you can't move before or after. So instead of that, maybe you can move. And here it shows you how far you'll move in this case. Uh, it's the medium range stick. So here we have medium, and you can basically move this any direction that you want. And so maybe you go like this, and you want to move. So you just move your miniature right to the end of that, just like that and you can move. Now, if when moving, you run into another base of the other player's uh, you know, team there, you'll end up having a melee combat there. Now, another thing you do is you can run. So instead of using your normal movement, you can go one step up, so from medium to large, uh, but you can't do any attacking or anything when you do that. It's just a way to you know, move around the board a little bit faster. So let's talk about attacking. Let's say this miniature moved in is the attacker. It's this player here. Now we're going to look at the basic attack example without looking at any abilities. Now we're going to look at this. This has three dice uh, that this one will use, and this is two. So the, the, the one being attacked, which is this one, will decide where they're going to place their two dice. They can put them both together as attack or defense or split them up one and one. So let's say they're going to put one as attack and one as defense. Now this player, let's say now they can decide. Let's say they're going to put two as attack and one is defense, for example. Then what's gonna happen is both players, and this, this sort of fighting happens sort of simultaneously. So this player's gonna roll its two attack, and this player's gonna want its one attack, and I'm gonna roll them simultaneously. So let's say this is what we rolled. This player rolled two axes with shield, and this one rolled one axe with shield. That's a hit, assuming that neither player has wounds, and they don't, these are just sort of fresh characters. So this one's gonna be hitting twice, and this one's gonna be hitting once. Now, some players over the course of the game might get some armor, and each of these is gonna take one damage before things are going to hit it. Then each player's gonna roll their defense dice, and any shield will help block one successful hit. So this one will block this, but this one still gets through, so this player will get one wound there just like that. Now this one did not defend, so this player will also get one wound. Now this is important because when there's no wounds on there, they could have either the axe or the shield for a hit, or they could roll just an axe for a hit. So this still would have been two hits, this would have defended one of them, and the same thing would have happened. However, if going into this, before rolling the dice, each of these already had a wound, this would actually not be a hit. When somebody's wounded, you actually need to roll that one in order to make it a successful hit. Now, this specific character has four health and three and minus one, so it's down to three, this one's down to two. Now, if you ever get rid of all of their health, that miniature is basically gonna be dead, it's gonna be coming off the board and out of the game. And remember, what you're trying to do is get the other player's hero down to zero health, or of course get 51 uh, prosperity points to win. Now, we talked about that as being basic, but in reality, all the characters have different abilities and such. Like this one is initiative, and no matter what, it's going to strike first. I told you most things happen simultaneously, so this is an ability that allows it to strike first, whether or not it was the attacker or not. Veteran is also a, another interesting ability uh, that allows it to, in melee combat, the attacker must re-roll all successful dice. So even though this we thought this did a damage, well, they would have had to re-roll this, and maybe they rolled this, and it wouldn't have been a hit. So that's what Veteran does. And then this also is, if it didn't receive any wounds during this turn, it can immediately declare another attack um, after attacking once per turn. So if in this case, if it didn't get damage, this one could attack again. Now on this side, this has Expert of Attack. So if this character actually put all their dice as an attack, it would actually get that many extra dice. So in this case, if both of these were here, they would get two more attack dice. It also has Distortion, which means a creature attacked in melee mode must assign all of its axes only to defense. So it's just, a, you know, just an interesting ability there to, to mess with uh, the other player. So that's pretty much how the rounds work going through those five phases. Each player will take their turn going through those phases until the game ends as mentioned previously. Now each of the players have their own decks, which obviously bring out all sorts of different characters with different abilities and such.
And here's some of the characters from the other star deck, the Ikari Spider Elves, for example. Feel free to pause it and check them out. Now here's some other cards uh, from that other deck. Now this is a tactic card. These are the ones that when you actually pay for the cost to play them on your turn, they actually get played face down. Your opponent doesn't know what's going on. And some of these cards will trigger um, on your opponent's turn versus your turn. They, they just trigger depending on the card. You'll flip them over and do what the card says. Uh, these are relics, which means again, your, your hero needs to have this relic in order to use this ability. And spells are things that just get activated and they get discarded. Now there's other modes to play this game. Two of them are PvP and PvE. Now they're similar, but in PvE you actually play against the game and, and you know, as the dice rolls you'll be flipping cards to see what those dice rolls are. In a PvP essentially you're facing another player in that way. Now those PvP and PvE cards are essentially running the overlord that you're playing against in quest mode. And in those quest modes you're going to have these different quests that you're trying to you know, complete. And when you're completing specific quests, you'll get a certain amount of honor and you're trying to get a certain amount of honor, uh, you know, the most you can without essentially being defeated. And there's different, you know, abilities and things like that when you tap the cards and certain things that will come out, you know, when you're doing this quest and what needs to happen for you to, you know, win this quest. For example, you have to defeat four wolves or have to defeat Abomination, for example. But essentially you're trying to have the most, you'll get, you know, these are essentially straight up honor, but you also get a point for every five prosperity points remaining, and, but you'll lose a point for every two wounds the hero has, and you'll lose points for failed quests as well in the end. Now also previously I did a preview for the game called Dragon Hunters, and you can use the miniatures and the cards from that game to be played within this game. Well there you have Legends of Signum. And as I showed in the overview, with numerous factions, including those that you can use from their previous game, Dragon Hunters, and a diverse strategies, each game provides a unique experience. Now, if you'd like to see all the final art and components and all the different pledge levels available, you can click the link below me in the description of this video, and it will take you directly to the Kickstarter project page. And I'm sure that the creators of Legends of Signum would love your support.